Thank you very much. I want to tell you about my personal journey, which uh, started uh, not, not from St. Thomas's Hospital this morning um, or later today, but in 2011, at the top of a mountain in the Italian Alps, where I'd been doing something called ski touring, which is a strange sport where you walk uphill on skis for six hours and you ski down for about 40 minutes, which is rather silly, really. Uh, but you see a lot of landscape and it's quite tiring. And we were on the last day at this uh, peak and I didn't feel well. Um, I didn't know why. Everything seemed very cloudy and um, I was tired. I managed just about to get down to the bottom of the valley and I realized that uh, when it was, I was pointed out some squirrels on a tree that I could see two of them. Um, actually, I could see four of them, um, and sometimes eight of them. And it turned out I had double vision. And as uh, a doctor, I knew that uh, that wasn't good news. Basically, you had generally a stroke, MS, or a brain tumor was the usual uh, diagnosis if you have that. So it wasn't a fun couple of weeks uh, having all the scans and all this uh, neurology and cardiology investigations. But it turned out I was lucky. I'd had a very minor occlusion to one of the vessels in the eye. Um, Something they call it a mini stroke or a micro stroke or an occlusion. But anyway, I got better uh, after three months. But uh, during that time, as you can imagine, you reevaluate uh, your own health, your life. I thought I was super healthy, uh, middle aged guy, knew everything about medicine, no problem. Uh, and I ended up with high blood pressure and I was, realized I was a bit overweight, I wanted to lose some weight. So I said, okay, I'll just do my own research and I'll, um, and I'll go to the internet and work this out. It can't be that hard. I've been um, studying epidemiology and genetics. I found over 100 obesity genes. I know about nutrition. Um, I'll, go, I'll go and work out what the best diet is for me. This is gonna be easy. Nothing was harder. Uh, I couldn't possibly imagine anything worse. It was a complete nightmare. The internet is the worst place to possibly go, as actually I found our government websites. Um, so uh, even uh, that usually good NHS uh, website on health, when it comes to nutrition, it's half of it is completely wrong and proven to be wrong. So. I realized I had an uphill struggle here, and I also realized that with all this faddism in nutrition, this was also everyone was splitting into these religious groups uh, that weren't really talking to each other and everything was getting more disparate. And I realized that the reason we'd gone down this route with this, this old-fashioned dogma of the calories, uh, the fats, the carbohydrates, the pro all these sugar v. fat debates that we're having, and despite this, we've been getting fatter and fatter, uh, was the fact we're missing one important trick. And that important trick is something I'm going to talk about. It's called the microbiome. And this is essentially needs to be thought of as a, a new organ in our bodies, like a second liver. Only really been discovered since we used genetic sequencing to find out that there are 100 trillion microbes inside all of our guts, in the lower part of our intestines, lurking there in the dark, uh, waiting for something to happen. And as, that's the same number of, uh, of microbes as there are cells in our body. So we are pretty much 50-50 uh, human in our current form. And these microbes are not just boring things that you get flushed down the toilet. They actually are, it, each of them has um, hundreds of genes. We have with them two, three hundred times more genes than in our own bodies. They produce thousands of essential chemicals for our body. They produce vitamins, hormones, and about a half of all the chemicals pumping around our blood at the moment are influenced by our microbes. They influence our brain, our mood, our happiness, our whether we we're, we're feel full, we'll feel uh, um, hungry. They determine our energy levels, anxiety, as well as digesting our food and looking after our immune system. So 
it's obvious we need to start looking after our gut microbiome. So I started researching this and I, I was writing my book, The Diet Myth, and it all started to fit into place how if you started thinking of uh, how you should nourish this uh, new organ in your body, you could start to think about health in a holistic way that all these religious groups could come together and actually you could make sense of all this, this disagreement because everything seemed to match up. And I went on my own personal journey of discovery um, and did all kinds of experimental diets myself. Um, I read a lot about how good plants were and I think that's one consistent thing that has stayed. Nobody really disagrees that eating plants is good so you read those books um, about totally going vegan and I said okay I'll try that let's go vegan uh, fantastic for one or two weeks three weeks not so sure uh, for, and I ended up on a, on a trip to America and that was the complete end of it there was no way uh, you could cope with being vegan uh, in the USA uh, and I also craved cheese I realized I didn't miss meat at all I could do without meat and by this time I'd pretty much cut out meat out of my diet and I said, you know, all these things I was just doing to see what made me feel better that also I could feel was good for my microbes. So I went on the three-day uh, French cheese diet, as you do, um, and that was just taking the most unpasteurized, fattiest cheese you could get and only having that three times a day. Again, absolutely fantastic day one. I said, this is a killer. You know, you can't, and I said, poiss and a roquefort, you know, nothing better really. With, uh, allowed myself a glass of red wine to wash it down with. That's fantastic. Day two, well, yeah, it's getting a bit samey, isn't it? Day three, had enough cheese. No way I could carry that on. So, um, but the next thing I had to plan was to see what effect on my gut microbes, because I was testing my gut microbes all the time, and this is pretty sort of original back then, and no one really knew what we were going to find. And I said, I'm going to really give them to a test now, so it's the 10 days McDonald's diet for me. So uh, only eating at McDonald's, the supersize me experiment on my gut microbes. How am I going to do this? So um, I was gearing myself up psychologically, not a big fan of McDonald's, but I had to do it for science. And then uh, it turned out another volunteer step forward, someone who actually liked McDonald's, hard up for cash, uh, an impoverished student who also happened to be my son. <laughs> Ticked all the boxes. So that was great. Um, so. Tom did this, to much to the jealousy of all his friends at university, and he went there and uh, he said, you know, this would be great. Came back to me four days later, said, eating McDonald's for all my meals uh, isn't, I don't feel very well. I'm not sure I can carry on for 10 days. You know, it's affecting my work. And so as a, you know, and he said, can I stop now? Uh, and as a concerned parent, obviously I said, no. <laughs> uh, we're going to finish this and publish this in the Sunday Times. And that's exactly what we did. So, but he did finish. He went a bit grey. Um, I, I don't think it affected his results, which were dreadful anyway. But, um, but he said it did. Uh, but the serious point is he'd lost 40% of the diversity of his gut microbes. So uh, in that time, basically, they'd been deprived of fibre. Uh, because I think he threw away that little bit of gherkin that um, is in the middle. <laughs> which was the only thing to hold him up. So uh, he, his microbes suffered more than he did. Um, and uh, we know that di gut diversity is really important. The more diverse means the more number of species you have in your microbes. It's not the total number, it's how many different types you've got. And by reducing it, he really uh, lent himself extra risk of all kinds of diseases. His immune system would be more compromised. Everything's bad. Every time we look at diseases and controls, normal healthy people, all the disease group have less diversity. So that was not good. Um, he's, it's taken him five years to get back uh, to normal levels. And that's uh, with lots of parcels from his father and, um, uh, and fruit and veg boxes. Um, now, um, after that, um, I wasn't keen to repeat that one, but I, I wanted to see how I could improve my gut microbes because I'd been on a pretty good, mainly plant-based, uh, diverse diet, uh, Mediterranean-style diet, very little meat, um, lots of variety, trying to get, um, as we know, more than um, 
you get over 20 to 30 different types of plants in a week. That is the optimum for your gut diversity. Okay, and that includes, it doesn't, and that means not having 30 portions of kale every day or every week, but actually different ones. Okay, so it's the diversity, it's the herbs, it's the spices, it's the different seeds, it's the nuts. You can really do it, and you don't have to eat otolenghi's every night, you know, but um, that does help though. <laughs> Get your numbers up. Um, but the, um, the diversity um, was, it was really important. So I, I decided to go, as you do, to Tanzania to uh, uh, just stay with a hunter-gatherer tribe for a few days to see what effect that would have on my uh, gut microbes and went with a, a BBC radio uh, uh, team and, and eating um, uh, all their berries they have on the roots and living uh, exactly as they would with having baobab porridge for breakfast and uh, dinner was a nice porcupine, uh, roasted porcupine, things that you'd never normally have. I did manage to boost my gut microbes by about 20%, my diversity. I thought, this is fantastic. Unfortunately, it all went away on the airplane home with the airplane food. Uh, you know, it was back to zero after. So I need to stay there much longer. But you can, you can boost it even if you are uh, high just by getting uh, all that diversity and other microbes. But... Um, then um, I did uh, some other experiments, and we started to look at this whole idea of uh, diversifying our, our own uh, gut microbes. So, um, and looking at how I might be different to other people. So we started by uh, looking at some twins and found that uh, identical twins, um, that this is what I study for the last 25 years, we have 13,000 identical twins, uh, that we, we study regularly looking at their diets and these are genetic clones of each other and so we, we put them uh, through various tests and we're, um, we're doing this study at the moment called the PREDICT study which is the, probably the largest interventional nutrition study ever done a thousand twins all having identical meals and we give them something called uh, glucose monitors I don't know if you've ever seen these ones um, are our favorite Prime Minister at the moment, Theresa May, uh, has one uh, on her arm, and that sends signals to your iPhone, basically, and you can see in real time what's happening to your glucose. So it's an incredible invention that you couldn't have Im Im imagined five years ago. And we know that if you spike a lot, as diabetics do all the time, but as a normal person, we now know that if you have lots of these glucose spikes, your uh, more likely over the course of a year to put on weight and be at risk of diabetes. So you don't want to have lots of spikes, you want to have a nice flat curve when you have your chocolate digestives or your glass of wine. And it turned out that even identical twins in this study, um, we're finding one would have Prosecco, they both have Prosecco, one would peak and the other would be absolutely flat. And these are genetic clones. Why could that be? The difference is in their gut microbes. They're different, okay? Because although you guys share 99.5% of your DNA and you're all, on average, fifth cousins, so it's a bit incestuous, this meeting. I feel it's like family group, whoa. Uh, but, you know, uh, get to know each other. Um, but microbe-wise, you're hardly related at all. Only about 20% of your microbes are actually related to each other. Okay, and you've all got totally unique microbes. So this is what's happening in our identical twins. They only share about 30% of their microbes, which is incredible because everything else we see about identical twins is so similar. And this explains our whole personalized approach to food and medicines and everything else that we've been told. Why am I different? Why does this diet work for this person? It doesn't work for me. Why does this cause me this effect? It's all down to this very varied new organ in our bodies, the microbiome. And I started testing myself um, with one of these monitors and I found really weird stuff like I was getting um, a big hit every time I had bread, any type of bread sandwich. And for 10 years uh, in hospital, of maybe more, my, all I had is a, I went to the, past the sandwich shop and I got a tuna and sweet corn on bread sandwich. And I realized that had been causing me problems for 10 years and probably added a kilo, uh, a kilo every year. 
And if I'd just chosen what doesn't make me peak, which is I don't get anything with rice, whether it's sushi rice or sticky rice, has exactly the same uh, sugar content, I don't get those problems. I also found that red grapes send me haywire, whereas I can have strawberries and blueberries, nothing happens. And I tested my wife, and she has the opposite reaction. So everybody's different. So, you know, it's not like I'm telling you how to eat. I'm just saying we have to realize that everybody um, has a different response to this. And so we need to start thinking about um, nutrition in a totally different way. We've got to realize that we have this uh, new organ in our bodies, that we've got to nourish a bit like you would a garden. You have to uh, fertilize it, make sure it's well it's, it's got plenty of variety, it's getting different seeds every day, and you, to avoid pesticides, you avoid um, processed foods, and you give it plenty of fiber, okay? Just like you would uh, nourish your, re your real garden. And also, at the same time, realize that everybody's individual. There is no one-size-fits-all rule. These guidelines about uh, the best diet or this, it's all nonsense. You've got to find out your own way. And there are certain rules about keeping your microbes happy, and that is generally diversity, okay? Diversity of plants, and you can't go far wrong, but also your fermented foods and everything else. So have a shot of your kefir and your kombucha and your sourdough and your whatever it is, but try something new every day if you can, and that will help you and your gut microbes. And remember, the way I like to think about it is um, I... I since I discovered all this, I never uh, view food in the same way. I also realize that uh, with 100 trillion microbes inside me, I'll never truly eat alone again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>